so hello and welcome to the continuation of our lesson on interpolation techniques so in our previous video we learned about the direct method of interpolation and in this video we'll be learning about the Lagrangian interpolation technique so I'm going to kind of off the final year student of mathematics KNUSD and I'll be taking you through this lesson so you should know that we are still discussing the problem of determining a polynomial of degree n that passes through n plus one point so in our previous video on the direct method of interpolation we introduced you to what interpolation was so you were like for instance let's say there was a population census every census every 10 years let's say 2000 2010 and 2020 then in 2000 the population of kenya was let's say thousand in 2010 we had 1500 and in 2020 we have 3000 so sometimes to be interested in knowing the population at 2015 can we use what we have here to estimate the population at 2015 so that is what interpolation helps us to do and we said we're going to discuss two methods for doing that the direct method and today we'll be discussing the Lagrangian interpolation technique so the Lagrangian function is given by what you can see here f of n x because summing i from 0 to n l i of x then f of x i where n is the order of the function so for instance when we are approximating by a first order polynomial then n will be 1 if it's a second order polynomial then n will be 2 all right and the li that we can see the li of x that we can see we call it the interpolation polynomial okay this is called the lagrangian polynomial the lagrangian polynomial for the interpolation points and it is given by what you can see here okay so li of x is equal to the product from j starting from 0 j is not equal to i to n then x minus xj then xi minus xj so to be able to do and understand and um, then lagrangian interpolation these are the most two most important things that you have to take note of so this here and that's here and you are good to go okay all right so let's solve examples with that so it says the upward velocity of a rocket is given as a function of time in the table below so we have the time component here and this is the velocity so at time zero the velocity is zero at time 10 the velocity is 227.04 at time 15 the velocity is 362.78 and so on okay so there are two questions here that we are going to solve using the lagrangian interpolation and the first question says we should determine the value of the velocity at time t equals 16 seconds using a first order lagrangian polynomial and the second question says we should use the second order to solve the same question and after that we should find the absolute relative error okay so solution all right so what we will discuss so far we are seeing that the lagrangian interpolating polynomial is given by 
what you can see here, right? And where the Lagrange polynomial Li of x is given by this. Okay, I hope you can see that. Okay, so from our question, since we are finding for velocity, and the velocity is given by v of t, we just changed our f of xi towards v of t i. Okay, so we change our f of x to v of t because velocity is a function of our time t. So that's why you can see this here that we have the first order Lagrangian polynomial will be given by v n of t will be equal to summation with i starting from 0 to n l i of t then v of t i. So since we are using the first order polynomial to do our approximation, it means n is equal to 1. So that means wherever you find n, we put 1 there to get this. So i will run from 0 to 1. So when we decide to expand, then we get v1 of t will be equal to l0 of t, v t0, then plus l1 of t, then v of t1. Okay. So right now, what we need is that we have to get a point t0 t1 so we have to get these points okay then we also have to get what our l0 of t is and what our l1 of t is so we can get our l0 of t and l1 of t from this thing here okay so we have li of x is equal to what you can see here but as you see here our function is a function of t and not x so we can change the x to t and that gives us this okay and you should know that our i runs from 0 towards 1 so that means i is either 0 or i is 1 so we come here When i is zero, okay. So this is it. L i of t. So L i of t will be equal to what we have here. So when i is equal to zero, you see we are saying that j is not equal to i, so that means j can never be zero. So we we'll get t minus t one then t naught minus what t1 so that will be the expression for l naught of t then when i is equal to 1 in this case t will be 0 because t can never be equal to i and um, j can never be equal to i so j will be equal to 0 so we get t minus t naught then t1 minus t naught and that's for l1 of t So now that we know what L1 of t is and what L1 of t is, when you make substitution, we'll get V1 of t will be equal to t minus t1 over t naught minus t1, V of t naught plus t minus t naught, t1 minus t naught, V of t1. So that means right now we just need to know what t naught v of t naught is that point and t1 v of t1 is okay so you see the question says we should find the velocity at time t equals 16 seconds so choosing two points you know with the first order we use two points we are going to choose two points which are closest to what t equals 16 seconds and which also contain 16 and from the table it is these two points okay so let's come to the table 
So you see, we are finding the time, the velocity at time t equals 16 seconds. So you know 16 will be somewhere here. And it is in between 15 and 20. And it is closest to them. So we will take these two points. Okay. So taking those two points, it means our T naught is 15. Our V of T naught is 362.78. It means our T1 is 20. And our V of T1 is 517.35. So we make substitution into this. And making substitution is going to give us what we have here. Okay. So that happens to be the polynomial of the first order. Right now, you are supposed to find the velocity at time t equals 16. So that means wherever we find t, we put 16 in there. So we get v1 of 16 will be equal to whatever you can see here. And when you evaluate this, you are going to get 393.69 meters per second. So that's going to be the answer for the first part. I hope you get that. Okay. So now let's go to the second order polynomial. So we know that our v n of t is equal to summing from 0 to n l i of t v of t i. But here, since it's a second order polynomial, our n is 2. So we will get v 2 of t will be equal to what we have here, just that here our n is what? 2. So we put 2 there. So when you expand this, all right, you're going to get this here. I hope you get that. Hmm. So now we need to find this, that, and this one here. And we can find them from this relation. I hope you get that. OK. So when i is equal to 0, when i is 0, we will get L0 of t will be equal to whatever we have here. So that means that g will run from 0 to 2, but g should never be equal to i, so that means g can never be what? 0. I hope you get it. So that means g will take the values 1 and 2. And wherever we find i, we put 0 there. So that means we get t minus t1, t not minus t1, and again, g can take 2, so we get times t minus t2, then t not minus t2. So that's for when i is equal to 0. So this will be the expression for L0 of t. Then when i is equal to 1, that means j can never be 1. So j will take 0 and 2. And i will take what? The 1. So we'll have t minus t0 over t1 minus t0. Multiplying t minus t0 over t1 minus t2. Okay, so this will be the expression for L1 of t. Then when i is equal to 2, that means j can be 0, 1, and i will take the 2. So we will get t minus t0, t2 minus t0, then all multiplying t minus t1 over t2 minus t1. That's the expression for L2 of t. So making substitution into this relation here. Okay. That means you're going to get V of T will be equal to, so you know now, this is the, the whole of what? L0 of T, L1 of T, and L2 of what? T. So that means now we have to find these three points. That's T not V of T not t1 v of t1 and t2 v of t2 and you know we don't just select any point the question says we should find the approximate um, velocity at time t equals 16 seconds 
So that means to choose our three points, it should be points which are closest to t equals 16 seconds and they also contain it. So when we come to our table, we know that 15 and 20 are the first two we select. So now we have to select the second point, okay? So you can see that from 16 to 10, the difference is 6. And from 16 to 22.5, the difference is 6.5. So that means that the point here, 10, 227.04, will be closer to 16 than the point 22.5 to 602.97. So that means we will select these points. So we have these three points as our selection. So that is what you can see here. That's why we selected these three points. So when you select them, then that means our T0 to be 10, then V of T0 to be this, our T1 will be 15, V of T1 will be this, our T2 will be 20, and V of T2 will be 517.35. So hence, making substitution into this here, we will have V2 of T will be equal to t minus 15 over 10 minus 15 so whatever you can find here and that will be our polynomial right the one we are interested in so right now the question is if you should find the velocity at time t equals 16 seconds so that means we will come to this here and wherever you find t we put 16 there so when you do that you will get v2 of 16 will be equal to 392.19 meters per watt second. So that's what we get when we use a second order polynomial. Okay. So the question went on to say we should find the relative absolute error. So the relative absolute error is given by this relation here. So in this case, we have V2 of 16 minus V1 of 16 over V2 of 16 times 100%. So when you make substitution and you make computations, we are going to get 0.382%. That happens to be the answer. Okay, so this is how we use the Lagrangian interpolation to interpolate, okay? And you can see that it is very, very simple. If you know your f of n, x, and you know your L of I X, then it's very very simple. Okay. So thank you very much. If you didn't understand anything, you can always go back to the video and watch it again, and understanding will be better. So in our next series of videos, we'll be talking about numerical integration. I'm sorry, numerical differentiation. We've already discussed numerical integration, where we talked about the trapezoidal rule, the Simpsons one third, and Simpsons three eighth. So we we'll discuss numerical differentiation where we talk about the Euler's method, Rangikuta second order and Rangikuta fourth order. So thank you very much and see you in the next video where we discuss the Euler's method. Bye.